In general, we tend to take our running water for granted, whether it's taking a shower, doing the dishes, or just washing our hands. At the outset of the 20th century, however, the country was facing waterborne epidemics like cholera, diphtheria, and dysentery. The chlorination process changed all of that, and by 1941, there wasn't a single case of cholera in the entire United States. With water being the most vital ingredient to survival on the planet, Connecting Point's Brian Sullivan headed to the West Parish Filters Water Treatment Facility in Westfield to look at the past, present, and future of water purification. Water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. Well, at least not yet. Before we can get here, or here, or here, there are several processes to go through. Let's start at the first step in that process, which involves the what and where. The what is the Cobble Mountain Reservoir, and the where, according to this map, is near Westfield, Massachusetts. Its actual location is Blandford and Granville, and getting there or anywhere within the 31,000 acres of undeveloped land that surround it is forbidden to the public. Constructed in 1931, this reservoir holds 22.5 billion gallons of water and uses its elevation of 950 feet above sea level as part of its delivery system. There are three pathways by which the water gets down here before it enters a plant, and it's all by gravity. Because when the system was built back in the 1920s um, and 1930s, uh, there was not very much um, power to be had. So they built the system using the hills as the, the way that the water would get down to the plant and then to the city. The first stop on its journey is this area, known as the sedimentation basin. And this is where some of the larger particles get a chance to settle out before going through the treatment process. This much smaller reservoir holds roughly 50 million gallons, and since that number exceeds the average daily output, there's usually a good amount of surplus. On average, we're using about 30 million gallons a day, so that means the water's here for a little bit more than a day before it enters the plant. Um, on peak days, though, when we're using between 45 and 50 million gallons of water, um, the water might come through here and last about a day. Visitors to the plant may notice these fields of what appear to be oversized maintenance hole covers. And in a sense, they are, only these are used for delivering sand underground to here. Now, they may not get the kind of usage they did a century ago, but on those peak days, this spot serves as a filter for the extra water that's being delivered. This cavernous area underground is known as the slow sand filter. This one here built in 1925 was just cleaned, which might explain why I'm not underwater right now. But up until 1974, this was the only type of water filtration done at this plant. But with the advent of things like the Clean Water Act of 1972 and the Safe Drinking Water Act of 1974, more federal funds became available for structures like this one, which was actually built in 1974. They've been working out of here ever since. The 1974 building keeps pretty much everything under one roof. Water testing labs, the control room, and of course, lots of pipes, big and small, mostly big. But the process in here doesn't take place until it's gone through a pre-treatment out back, where the humming of these motors is a 24-7 endeavor. There's a couple of processes starting here. Um, it's coagulation and flocculation. So coagulation is the rapid mixing of the chemical with the water. The flocculation is the forming of that flock. So behind me, you'll have two sets of basins. There's smaller chambers that are performing the rapid mixing, which is getting that chemical in contact with every molecule of water. Um, and then we go to these larger chambers with slow mixing. And this is where the particles are allowed to attach to each other and form the flock that would eventually go to the filter bed. And this is where the rapid sand filtration takes place. We stopped in while one of the filter beds was getting a backwash. It's kind of a fascinating process as it removes the buildup that's collected over the 24-hour period that the filter was running. That wastewater is then flushed out to the lagoon on the edge of the property, while the bed refills in preparation for its next filtration cycle. It's a system that's worked since the plant has been in operation, but due to state DEP regulations that have been in place since 2012, new violations have been discovered in the drinking water in certain parts of Springfield. Many residents received this letter here, which may have been a bit scary for some customers, but what it really means is that the treatment process needs to be updated. 
The not-so-distant future of water treatment can be found under this tent here on the outskirts of the campus. This pilot filtration program is the result of bench-scale tests done by the UMass Civil and Environmental Engineering Department. Now it's in the hands of Blue Leaf Incorporated, a company out of Charlton, Massachusetts that specializes in pilot programs like this one. And while the means by which they collect their data might be a little complex for an outsider like me, the desired results make perfect sense. One of the methods that we're using is a dissolved air flotation. So we're trying to create a bunch of tiny micro bubbles that float those fragile particles out of the water before they get onto the filters. As science advances and as we realize that there's more things in the water that should be taken out of the water, the things that were built 100 years ago don't work anymore to, to remove those same things. So this approach is really, can we make our water cleaner? The lab itself is essentially a miniature version of the treatment plant with a much wider margin for error. The research is being done in a fall season as well as one in the spring months. And once the final report is in and the new plan is implemented, it will be in addition to the current system, only more effective. But this is still all off in the future. In the meantime, the water keeps flowing. From Cobble Mountain to the Said Basin, through these pipes, and eventually out to the homes and businesses in every city and town that they service on this map every day. This is a 24 hour a day, 365 day operation. So we never stop producing water. Um, this plant is fully staffed 24 hours a day.